Hello and welcome back to Ironcast. And Ginger, we've got another special guest this week. One of my favourite ever players for West Ham. And I, and I think the teams he was in, the memories he created. What are you going to say, Ginger? You say that every week. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I <laughs> just because he sat there. I was actually going to gonna say. say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I just, uh, I love the man. Here he is, Anton Ferdinand. Welcome to Ironcast. You've actually filled in as co-host. This isn't your debut. No. Yeah, to it. step up when Ginger was too hungover after his birthday. Oh, I, 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 I didn't know. get an invite to that f birthday. Oh. <laughs> didn't get an invite. What, what's going on, Ginger? Kept it quiet, mate. Didn't want anyone, didn't want anyone to know I was 40. Oh. Didn't want anyone to know. Uh, Little quiet one, mate. You know me. Never, uh, never, no, ne ne never liked a night out, so it was nice and quiet. Uh, Anton, what were you just touching on there, just before we started recording? You've been at West Ham since a long time, nine years old, but you were a ball boy. What, what do you have to do when you're a ball boy at West Ham? I'd love to know. Um, I can't really remember it if I'm honest. I remember <laughs> it was at a time when when um, Upton Park was being renovated. The main stand was being renovated um, into the new West Stand. I thought were you were you not a ball boy for Rio's debut? That, no, that not no for Rio's first game back. Oh, back at Upton Park. Upton Park after right. leaving to go to Leeds. Um, and I remember being right near the tunnel. <laughs> Where they come up, up the stairs, and I was going, Rio, Rio. And he just blanked me, and I thought, you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing, man? I'm your brother. What's up, what's up with you? Well, Focused. the Neville, bro Focused. The Neville brothers would blank each other. There's that famous clip of them blanking each other. Yeah, so. I got him back, though, years later when we played Upton Park, and I wallet one in the back of the net. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and blanked him after that. <laughs> you know, but yeah, at that time, being, being young, being a West Ham fan, um, Brother coming back to Upton Park, a lot of different emotions. Yeah, I bet. You know, um, was scared for him in terms of how the fans would receive him, you know, and what effect that would have on me at the time. What did you say he was brother. nine? You no, young? I, was, no. I was older than that. I think I was about, I was about 15 at that time. I'd signed for West Ham when I was nine, but I was about 15 at that time. Um, and the West Ham fans were brilliant with him which gave made me comfort. Happy. Yeah, it made me happy. He gave me comfort. And then he scored. <laughs> Did he? <laughs> yeah, he scored. Oh, he scored, man. but he didn't celebrate. Oh, nice. He didn't I didn't celebrate. That. Um, and yeah, that was his only goal up to Park, by the way. He was scored up to <laughs> Oh, that's true. Yeah, down. every goal he scored was away. Yeah. Was away. That's crazy. And you know, I know it's devastated. He was devastated because one thing he wanted to do was celebrate a goal. Upton Park, yeah. and, and, he could, and, he and he couldn't it. do it. Couldn't do it. Oh man! And so, I mean, you grew up around West Ham. Do you remember the first? Do you remember first starting to train with the academy? With who were the players you were looking up to, and maybe you saw around the place like really early on? Um, the players that I, I looked up to: uh, Izzy Eric Penn, who would have been the youngest player to play for West Ham if he didn't forget his shin pads in the <laughs> in the. Um, the dressing room away at Man United. <laughs> um, him, but then you got Jermaine Defoe, Michael Carrick, Joe Cole. Um, these are the players that I, I looked up to and, and I wanted to follow in their footsteps. But it was one thing I must say about West Ham and the Academy is I, I touch on it a lot when I'm when I'm speaking, speaking about West Ham is when you do come through the youth team, you're taught to look after the people that come underneath you. Mm. You know, it's bred, it's put in you that you look after the people that come underneath you, you know, and and Joe Cole for sure done that with me more than, and Jermaine Defoe more than than, than the others. Um, and it was a, an eye-opener, my first time coming into the building and, and seeing these players um, train, you know, and, and their dedication and discipline within yeah, that's a bit of a matter because you, you must be mates with them now obviously yeah. coming up and seeing them and like to, yeah. to be to look up to them like that and then all of a sudden you're in the same dressing room it do, must, do it must be a what, mad feeling do you know what was crazy what was di what was different for me was i knew them all already because of rio yeah of course yeah because because of rio i'd been i was around the first team players because of rio you know um i remember training with with rio in the youth team with the youth team with tony carr when i was 13, 14, you know, like when, we used to, when you have um, a week off of school yeah. for half term, I'd go in and I'd train, do like the warm up with the, with the youth team and stuff. So 
Joe Cole's about. They're all about. So I already knew them mm. before I'd even come into the into the staff, come onto the staff, and before I started training the first team, I already knew them. You know, and, and I remember my first training session with the first team. Um, I was actually at Little Heath, and Tony Carr had had come in to the dressing room when uh, um, Anton had been asked to go back. And I was rushing back to get over. I was buzzing on the phone to my mum, yeah, going train with the first team and all that type of stuff. And I got there. And when I got there, the nerves just started to s s hit me. <laughs> they just started to set in. And I weren't really someone who got nervous, but I like going to train with the first team. This is what I've always wanted. Mm. But the nerves were, these guys are going to expect Rio because they've all played with him. Mm. Paolo De Canio, Frederick Canute, you know, um, Joe, Cole, Michael Carrick, Defoe, they've all played with Rio. So like, I was thinking, they're expecting Rio. <laughs> like, what did they get? <laughs> they got Anton. <laughs> <laughs> they got Anton. Um, and I remember the first thing that happened, we were playing a game and I got the ball off the goalkeeper and I was being shut down by Freddie Canute and, and um, Jermaine Defoe. And I went to go back towards goal and I croiffed between the two of them <laughs> and stepped out with the ball. And I swear, like, my shoulders <laughs> went back, back then. I was, like, I was like, yep, they've seen Rio. <laughs> like, you know, and then played the ball. And I remember Glenn Rhoda going, that's why he's here. That's why he's here. Cool. You know, and, and my confidence just grew from mm. there. And, and talking about it before, about Paolo Di Canio, I remember in my first training session, obviously I'd watched him for years as a West Ham fan and I'm training with him and we all know about the way he chops. You know, mm. he'd, he'd fake a shot and chop or fake a cross and chop. So I knew it was coming. Still can't I stop knew, it. but I just couldn't stop it. The way that he'd done it, the way he'd done it and got his body in between me and the ball, it was just, I was like, I know it's coming. And I remember going, how do I deal with that? If I know it's coming and I still can't deal with it, what what do I do? Yeah. Nothing. Let him do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, you mentioned Glenn Rhoda there. I wanted to get your thoughts. It's been a couple of years now almost since uh, since he passed away and um, he gave you your debut. He's very instrumental in your early period at West Ham. And I wonder, what were your, what were your memories of Glenn? How much do you owe him for your um, start? Yeah. Along with Tony Carr, Paul Heffer, the late Peter Braybrook, um, I owe... The names I've just mentioned and Glenn Rhoda, everything in terms of my career. Glenn Rhoda, uh, they all played a part in my early days, um, making me ready to be a West Ham player. But Glenn Rhoda taught me things that have taken me through football mm. for my whole career. I remember um, him saying, there are two bits of advice he said to me. He, he said, um, Anton, the reason why you're trained with the first team is because of the first impression I had of you. And I asked him, I said, what was that? He said, I was watching a youth team game at Chad Leaf and the, it was windy. He was playing against Everton. It was really windy and the ball went up in the air and I was on the edge of the box and the ball rebound off somebody and spun up into the air and I went up to header it and instead of clearing it, I let it hit the back of my head and go into the keeper's hands mm. and show some composure. And he went, that was my first impression of you and that stuck with me. And that's why you're now training with the first team because I knew you was going to be the next one because of you showed me something that I've not seen in any, any of the others. Quite and he said, first, as well. he said, first impressions in football are one of the most important, if not the most important. And he said also, when you're on the ball, because you like the ball at your feet, the first pass you see nine times out of 10 is the right one to play it. Mm. Even if it is, a five yard pass because it changes the picture. And that stuck with me throughout my whole career. Why was and my first su first thought of a pass into the stand? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not slightly di slightly no, different I'm player not, to Rio and Anton. I'm not having it. I'm not no, having it. No. I'm not having it. That's not you, man. I'm not having it. I used to shout to Gabs. Like, say I'd made a clearance and it's gone in the stand. I'd go, uh, don't worry, Gabs, they can't score out there. <laughs> Gabs would turn around to, to me and go, nor can we, we're too much there. <laughs> he must have said it to me every other game. Uh, I'm not having it, though, because no. you, you, was, you was tops on the ball yeah. for me. Oh. <laughs> you were, I was uh, never as comfortable, like, not 
comfortable as you though. Do you know what I mean? No, but you like. I also like to win it back and give it to boys who were probably on more money than me who were slightly better players. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing you didn't do. You didn't give it to Nigel Rococo. You, <laughs> you moved him out of the way and said, I'll do it. <laughs> no, I said give it to the good players. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Yeah, That's yeah. like, you know, I, I think I think you're doing yourself a disjustice. No, yeah, I yeah. think your ball into the front man was good. Mm. You know, the, 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 the balls that every centre-back needed, you had them in your locker. I just, would say I had it in the locker. It just didn't happen too often. Just <laughs> didn't come out of the locker. Uh, and to, uh, the relationship with your brother, I wondered, was it an advantage to have Rio as a brother, or actually, does it bring a whole new load of pressure on? And are you expected to model your game on him? Did it, you know, was it helpful or was it unhelpful? It was both. The pressure was at times was was unbearable at times, and. It didn't help. The boy is calling me Frio. <laughs> so I've heard about this. Well, explain Frio. Frio so or they, Rio's brother. Yeah, was, was because I'm calling Rio's brother or, Fri or Frio. Or I heard lips, that's because if Rio, Frio or Rio's brother. <laughs> I heard Frio was there. If Rio had an outfit on three weeks later, you'd yeah, have that's it what it is. Or hair, a haircut. I've done it three weeks later. <laughs> you know, um, but it was more like. Uh, it was it was a bit of both. The pressure, obviously, him coming through at West Ham and then me coming through at West Ham. And I've always said, when people watch me, I had five, ten minutes to do something that I likened me to him. Otherwise, I was rubbish because I was compared to him, mm. you know. And, and that was just, that's just the pressure you have of having a, a someone who's your brother who arguably is probably the best mm. around that time in the same position as what I played mm. and what we played, yeah. you know, and, and, but also it was a, a help because when I was playing against players that he played against, I could ring them and say, how did you cope with them? Like, what did you do? What do you think I need to do? The only time he didn't ask that question was when we were playing Man United. <laughs> that was the only time, <laughs> really? you know, but um, I must say the West Ham fans were, were brilliant with me in terms of my early years coming through. Uh, my debut, making a mistake for the first goal in, in two minutes live on the yeah. sky and, and hearing the fans behind the, the goal going, who the f <laughs> Like, this ain't a Ferdinand. He's mm. And I could hear it. And David James doing the same. You shouldn't even be here. What, David James oh, saying he, that? he caned me. He caned really? Me. He caned me. He denies it, but he caned me. <laughs> I'm telling you, he caned me. And I, and But the West Ham fans after that, they gave me time. They gave me opportunity, mm. you know, and and... and Really, yeah, but how old was your me. debut? 18, I was. 18, yeah. I, mean, I was on the bench when I was 17, away at Man United. First time I was ever on the bench. Um, and I ran the, the first team from 17 and trained with the first team at 17. But my actual debut was was 18. A high pressure game, live on Sky, first game of the season after being relegated. Fans are heightened because we're expected to win every bloody game yeah. in a championship. And I go in and make a mistake in the first two minutes live on Sky. I watched it back last night, so I just wanted to check what you were saying. But was it Eddie Eddie Lewis? I think he's the yeah. Preston guy, and he kind of just creeps in behind you. But, I, but again, it was my thought process of people need to see a calm and composed Anton because that's what they saw in Rio. Mm -hmm. And if you if you like, you say you watch the game. I'm so lackadaisical. I didn't check my shoulder to see if anyone was there. I was trying to be calm and collective, mm -hmm. collected. And I just let the ball go. I just let the ball come across. And then he came in and tapped it in. Mm. But it was that that subconscious mind going, I need to do need something to that looks something. like yeah. like Rio. But yeah. that was the pressure I always had. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. I wanted to ask, the, before you made your debut, so you're on the bench the 2002-2003 season, which is the season we go down. And I wondered, were you going to games that season? And did you see relegation as a bit of an opportunity? Because obviously that's the summer when Joe Cole leaves and all, like, all these great talent that were just slightly older than you in the academy go. Did you see it as an opportunity? It definitely done me well. Because if, if, if we didn't get relegated, I wouldn't have made my debut the first game of the season, uh, the season after down in the championship, for sure. But the West Ham fan in me didn't want the team to go down, mm -hmm. you know? Um but I knew I'd get an opportunity at some point, just wanting to come as quick, or I might have had to have gone, gone on loan. You know, um, that year in the championship ended up being my loan move, but it just yeah. happened to be at West Ham, which at times was hard because 
when you go on loan, you, you go on loan to make mistakes. I was making mistakes in my parent club, playing at the back, where sometimes they cost us goals. But as I said, the West Ham fans gave me a lot of slack. But I think that's a, a thing with West Ham. I think they, they, they would have seen you were trying to do the right thing. Yeah. That's, that's what West Ham fans want to see, you know. It, 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 oh, Jesus, I made a lot of mistakes, but it was always trying to do the right thing. C certainly at an early age. You know, there's, there's probably no better fans to do it in front of than uh, West Ham fans because they can see you're trying to and, improve and, and do not, the right and thing. And not just that, I think in terms of like your mentality, my mentality, mm. we always play for the badge. Yeah. We always play for the club. That was always at the forefront of our mind mm. was to play for the club first and worry about us personally mm. second. And I think because we played like that, we got away with more. Yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You know, and, and the say... It, the West Ham fans allowed me to make mistakes, but also improve yeah. in the team. Yeah. You were actually managed by Sir Trevor Brookin during your debut season. I wonder what was he like around the training room? What was he like? like? A legend like that around the place. He was brilliant. He played me everywhere but centre-back. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he, he played me. I remember coming to Ninia Park. I remember. And I played right side of a three-man midfield. I remember. You know, <laughs> and in the free all draw. Yeah. Earnshaw hat trick, Defoe yeah. hat trick. Yeah. You know, I certainly remember the Defoe hat trick. <laughs> like, <laughs> but he played me mid he played me right side of a three, he played me left side of a three. He played me in every like most positions rather than like as a defensive player. And I remember him like collaring me and saying, The reason why I'm playing there because you got the attributes to do it, you can do it. And hearing that from Sir Trevor oh. Brookin, you know, I felt flipping twenty foot tall. Mm. You know, and, and again, you say to me, don't worry about mistakes. I made mistakes when I played. It's how you deal with a mistake and how you go on. Mm. And and to hear that from Trevor Brookin, especially as a West Ham fan, mm. you know, um, was, was fantastic for me. Yeah. Any listeners of this podcast know I love to do a little bit of sliding doors. And you mentioned Jermaine Defoe there. That first half of your debut season, he's just unreal. Scores, scores the equaliser at Preston. And he's just unplayable. And I wondered what would have happened if we'd have kept him for the whole season? Because he was such a natural goal scorer. He was so much better than that level as the rest of his career proved. Do you think that was, a, would we go up that first season if Defoe sticks around? Yeah, I think we do. I think we go up. I think the goals that he scores, you know, and especially in, in big games, you know, and, and he had an ability especially when we went down and we saw it in that first part of the season where he could grab the game by the scruff of the neck and a chance will come and you know if it falls to him, it's a goal. It's a goal. You know? And um, I'm not saying Dave Connolly didn't have that because he did. But the foe just had something different. You know? Um, the foe could create a, a goal out of nothing. You could play a ball into him and he could do, do, do something, short back lift, bang, goal. It just Dave seemed Conley like he hit the that. ball so like clean. We spoke to Dino about it as well uh, on the on the last one. He just he, he by the time you're trying to close him down, he seemed to have taken the shot straight yeah. away, didn't he? Yeah, JD? and it was and just he had an unreal knack of hitting the ball so early. And you know what he had as well. He used to wait for sometimes he would wait for you to come and block it and and shoot back through your legs. Yeah. So like, as defenders, we go to block the ball. Mm. And when you go to block the ball, your legs open a little bit too much and he'd shoot back. He actually scored like that at Upton Park against, against me um, for Tottenham, where I went to go and block the ball. I should have known better because I'd played with him yeah, and, and trained coming. with him for so, for so long. But like you try to go and block the ball and he, and he almost drags it back through your legs, which makes it, makes it harder yeah. for the goalkeeper. You know, he, he just had that ability to be able to do that. I remember being young, watching him do a, a shooting session with Ian Wright, one of the best things I've ever seen. Right foot, left foot, unbelievable. Identical to righty. Mm. Wow. The end of that 3 4 season, we get the playoffs, but you don't play. Yeah, I was devastated. <laughs> what happened? Injury? No. Young, inexperienced, couldn't be trusted. Really? He's hard yeah. to drop. Alan, Alan Pardew. Was it pods as well? Yeah, it was pods. And you know what the thing is? You'd played in all the games up I'd to the played, playoffs. Yep. I'd played in in last at least five games playing right back and left back. 
in that game, in them games. I think I was playing left back. The last game of the season, I played left back, I think. And we're going into the playoffs, I'm thinking, right, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. Like, playoffs, big games. I'm in. Next thing, Rufus Brevitt, obviously coming back from uh, his ankle injury. And then we're going to the playoffs and he played Hayden Mullins left back and didn't, put, didn't play me there. And I was on the bench for the game against Ipswich. Uh, I think where Matty scored. Matty scored yeah, a world, two nil. It? Yeah. And um, which I swallowed. I was like, okay, cool. Then we get to the final and I'm thinking, okay, going to be go. on the bench for the final. Bruce for his brevet, I don't really play. I don't, just about to come back to training. And then get to the game. I'm not even on the Judy. I'm not even on the bench. <laughs> Rufus Brevitt's on the bench. And I'm thinking like, like, you're taking the mick. And I remember being, I was devastated. Absolutely devastated with it. And I, and I remember saying to Paz, like, how are you doing me like this? Mm. Like, I'm a West Ham fan. This, you game. know how much this means to me? Like, no disrespect to Brev. I know he's a senior pl player to me, but he's been out for so long. I've played in games that have got us into the playoffs, and you're doing me like that. Like you're not, you're not showing no what faith in me. What was his answer? Me. I'm just, I'm going with experience. Did he? I'm going, with, I'm going with experience, and and that was it. And it's funny that he did that to me in the cup final. <laughs> <laughs> <He did. laughs> Do you remember? I was going to speak to you about it. I was de in Cardiff. <sighs> Didn't want to bring it up, but now, now, now I have. <laughs> We you played right back semi final, semi -final. me Gabs, yeah. and then the final he pushed you next to Gabs and played yeah. Scaloni, didn't he? Yeah, Devo. That's that worked out well, didn't it? Clearly <laughs> got clearly got a knack of doing that to, to people. Pars in finals, <laughs> but he learns his lesson. A year later, you're in the playoff team, and uh, we go all the way to Cardiff. And it's one of those games that, uh, again, one of the high points of being a West Ham fan that victory over Preston mm. in the Millennium Stadium. But in all this glory we've had since, it kind of gets lost in the shuffle a little bit. But what uh, an experience! What a day that was against Preston. Yeah, that that day was was unbelievable. Up there, one of the best days in my West Ham career. Um, Ginger, no, I love a celebration. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I, lo I love it. I love being out on the pitch. I love interacting with the fans, having a dance, having a sing, and all that. I love it. And to get to do that and be one of the reasons why the fans are so happy and singing and chanting, like it was it was unbelievable. I just remember in the build up to that game, everyone was talking about David Nugent, how good he had been. And in my head, I'm going, I'm gonna shut them up. Like, <laughs> I could tell. He, ain't get, he ain't getting a kick in his game, I'm gonna shut him up. Like they're gonna be talking about me after, I'm not talking about him no more. And I remember going into that game and, and I remember saying it, like saying it to him while we were out on the pitch, like being brazen, you know, you know the way chat, I was. Yeah. Yeah, Love like, the chat. I know he did, he did like a chat. Like but... I would like, and they're not going to be talking about you after this. I love it. And, and so we go on to win the game, Bobby's and well with the, with the goal. And I just remember, I couldn't wait for the final whistle just to start so celebrating. Just so, exactly. <laughs> just so I could have a dance and have a celebration. I had blisters, I had brothers and sisters on my feet. <laughs> I had blisters all over the shop from my boots. But I took them off, I threw them in the stand and I was away. I was, if you look at pictures, I've got like tape underneath this, underneath my foot uh, with, where I had blisters and I didn't have time to, to get um, stuff put on them at half time. So I had to play with them. Taped them up. I had to play, I just taped them up and played with them in the second half. And, yeah, it was one of the best days of my life. Singing, it's like standing there singing "I'm Forever Blowing Bubbles," like what we saw with um, the the Conference League yeah. final. Mm. You know, people standing in front. But this was to get promoted, and it was just unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, it's such an important day in West Ham's history because we'd been through so much hardship, sold so many good players, financially bang in trouble. But because of that day and that victory, back in the Premier League and able to sign. Huge players like the Ginger Pele, James Collins, bringing 100%, in the budget. Just before I go to Ginge, <laughs> the, the, the biggest thing was, see, being a West Ham fan, it wasn't just about the football to me. They, these are, And I've been here since I was nine. So it was people that I was with every day at the training ground, yeah. Shirley the cook, 
you know, the kit men, Eddie, Pete, you know, it was about them. Like I knew the club was in financial difficulty and if we didn't go up that year, obviously the balloon payments were, were, were yeah. stopping that year and a lot of people were going to be surplus to, re to requirements. And as a player and a fan, I almost took that on, you know, and, 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 and use that as motivation. We need to win this game because there's people like Jimmy Friff, yeah. Shirley the Cook, who who were relying on us to get promoted. And, and all of that came out at the end. I think it was on the pitch for like hour and a half after the game, celebrating, <laughs> having a dance up. I had the, I wouldn't hear that long, but I, I, I talk about it all the time. I think when, as soon as I came into West Ham, I had that feeling that I'd been here forever. It's just the way the boys in the dressing room. And I certainly had the same feeling in 2007 when we stayed up. Because when you're, when you're coming up or when you're going down, you know, all the press and that will talk about the team, the players, the manager, what's happening, buddy, but, but when you're, you've got a love for a football club or where you're working, you think about, as Andon's meant, and surely, you know, all, all the kit men, do you know what I mean? It's, it's such a huge effect that people don't see. And I think that was the beauty of our team when I came into it yeah. the following year, that we, when we were at Chad Relief, it was everyone in it together. It was yeah. like us against the world sort of mentality, wasn't it? And that's, yeah. That comes from the history of the football club and 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 what was going on at the training ground. But that feeling, I think, for me, coming from South Wales into this football club, is 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 being ingrained in me from the history of the football club. I suppose mm. the momentum of that win carries us, I think, because the next season, Pards first in the Premier League. I mean, just set the world alight, like the FA Cup final, all that good stuff. C can I? Can I? The very start of that season, I sign. Yeah. Can you remember the number? Can you remember it? <laughs> yeah. I've never spoke to you about this, yeah. and I'm thinking I don't know if yeah. he remembers this because I never we never yeah. spoke at the time, did we? No. So anyway, me and Gabs come in so that summer preseason. Pars gives Gabs four, me five. So I'm thinking, you know, quite like the number five, lovely. Yeah, it's I the love first that. eleven. You were fifteen. Fifteen, I was. Same as Rio, was it? Yeah, we are fifteen. So it was all cut. We had a week. No, it might have been earlier than that. We had a couple of days. Yossi Benayoun comes in. Once 15, so obviously new signing, Anton gives him 15. Anton has my number five. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I was like, hang on a minute, what's going on here? But then I got 19 and... And it became iconic. Yeah, well, I don't know about that, but it I did it for a long time. <laughs> but we never spoke about that. I was thinking, no. has he got... I was thinking to me, has Anton gone and seen Pards here and like demanded number five? No. Or was it just... Do you know what happened, right? Obviously, the number 15 at West Ham yeah, is phenomenal course, with, with yeah. my family. You know, as to why I had it in 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 the first place, um, and then Yossi comes yeah. and it was some dude with his he family. Had to have 15, he had to have didn't number he? fifteen. Yeah. He loved number fifteen for some reason to his family. And Pards is saying to me, Anton, like, if you don't get because I was going, no, you like he went to me. I've got to take fifteen away from you, and I went, no chance. Do you know what a number means to to yeah. my family at West Ham? It's not happening. No chance, Pards. Gaffer, I say at the time. And he was like, This is a player I really want. And if we don't, if I don't give him the 15, he's not coming. I think it generally was that. Yeah, really? no, it was. I think it was, I swear. Wow. And I was like, So what did Pard say? Just go and ask the new ginger boy. He'll give you, he'll give, he'll give you five. Don't worry about then him. He, then he was like, Then he went to me. What number do you want? And I said, 15. I was like, 15. <laughs> and he went to me, what if I give you number five? I went, that's down to you. If you want to mm. give it, give me number five, give me number five, that's, that's, that'll be the only number that I'd go for. Yeah. Other than 15. And he went, all right, done. Didn't even, he just went, right, <laughs> I don't think he even, I don't think I was even <laughs> He was like, all right, done. And that was the end no, of I it. Did, you know what? It's, it's, it's not, it. I just remember it at the time. Just got to the club thinking, oh, right, that's how we're going. But it did. listen. How man, many kids no, went no. back to the club store with a Collins five shirt? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think there was one shirt. sold at the time. <laughs> All since, to be fair. So I, would, I wouldn't worry. I, mean, I, was I'm, not I must bothered. say, though, when you and Gabs come in to, to the club, probably the best thing that happened to me. Yeah? Yeah. Because I played against you two. You yeah. two came as a pair. Yeah, yeah. And I was thinking. Must have been tough. I was, I was we've thinking we've come in to play. We've come in to play. Yeah, yeah. Both of you's come in to play. And it just, it, 
it changed me. Mm. It changed because I went from this is my backline yeah. to now it's not. Mm. That was my like, do you know what I mean? And and me and Wardy had done well. Yeah. And me and Wardy were a partnership, like you and Gav were a partnership. Mm. Then I had to become selfish and almost go, it's, it's got to be it's me and someone. Yeah. Well, that's, that's how you, you got know? to be. And, it? and yeah. I went from Ferdinand and Wald to just Ferdinand yeah. mentality. Whereas maybe Elliot stayed Ferdinand and Wald. Mm. Maybe. Mm. Whereas my mindset changed and I went straight as Ferdinand and somebody. You know, and I think having you two in the building now and how good you two were, especially together, I knew I had to be, I knew I had to be on top of my game. And you to was. make sure that I play. You was, for sure. Because you played you played all that year with Gabs, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah. And it was, so you know, I like think I was enjoying London a little bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know in. what? You know what I must say? You didn't make it, because you could have nah. made it a thing. You didn't yeah. make it nah. a thing. You were playing better. That's what, that's what it's all about. You were you were playing better. Gabs, Gabs that year. He won how many years, didn't he? He was yeah. won how many years that year? Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable year. And you were brilliant. And there was no... You know, there was never any of that for me at all. I, f and I know, and 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 like, I don't, we've not sp spoken about it, but mm. I appreciate the fact because, as we know, the way football is mm. and the way some dressing rooms are and the way some players are, yeah, it can become very tit for tat mm. and and very bitchy in in a dressing room, especially when you. If if anything, because I knew you were playing so well, I was probably trying to help you and Gabs in a way yeah. in training. Not, I don't know about help, but like, you know what I mean? I, I, there was never um, sulking or anything like no. that because you were clearly playing better than better but, than me at the time I, and Gabs was doing his thing. You know why I appreciate it so much is because in my years coming into the team, I never got that from the last Christian mm. Daly, Malky, Mackay, Andy Melville. I always felt like I was a threat to them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like sometimes Christian Daly, not so much, but Malky Mackay for sure at times, I'd have the ball and he wouldn't tell me man on and I'd get caught. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So to go wow. from that as a young kid to now being a prominent member of the of, of the, the back line to having someone like Ginge come in and I'm thinking, I've got to step my game up while mm. I'm not going to play. And it's my dream to play in the Premier League and I'm now I've got the opportunity, but I may not play now. To not have that, yeah, we had a rivalry, mm. but it was never personal. No, no, never. You know, and when anyone went into the team, it wasn't a case of I wish them bad or there was none of that. But we speak about it like whenever we're together, we speak about that team at that time though. There was none of that. And it didn't, well, there might have been, but certainly from me, because you speak about that team, that mm. sort of like the love affair fans, with that sort fans of, love that fans love that era because, you know, we were all young, good, good lads and, and doing our thing. I didn't, I didn't get any of that mm -mm. at all. In, in in that in any dressing room, I think I've been at West Ham. If I wasn't playing, I I would train every day like it was a game. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? There was no there was no sort of like hanging back or like sticking Ant on a bad pass because he's playing. Mm -hmm. There was none of that in that dressing room. And I, and I mentioned it before. It was like going into training, helping your mates, and training, yeah. doing the best job in the world with with your best mates. And that was that whole time. That and is, and, and is... everything I was, even if I wasn't playing, I wasn't going to do anything to Ant on to. Maybe he wasn't going to play. I, I, if anything, like, yeah, try and help you out with me. And that was the same. Mm. Maybe I did play sometimes and you weren't. I, I yeah, didn't, 100%. Ne never felt it, was just, any... it was never, ever, like, even the FA Cup final. Mm. Do you think I wanted to play right back? No, yeah. I didn't. No. I played the whole season centre back mm. and was playing well. I didn't want to play right back. I didn't. Mm. But it wasn't a case of why am I not playing right? Why am I play not playing centre back? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Why mm. am I not playing centre back? It wasn't, it wasn't like that. For me, it was about the team first and what the gaffer picked on that day was the right choice mm. and it ended up being the right choice it was like mm. you say it weren't one of those where i'm playing right back and i don't really want to play here because i didn't want to play there yeah, yeah. so i'm going to flip in bounce the ball into ginge mm. and he gives the book do you know what i mean but yeah. there, but i'm saying it but there is some you used to do that like without that. trying though <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, cheers, mate. And then go, Ginge, come on. Come <laughs> Waving your arms about. <laughs> was there an element in that first season of the Premier League where you're thinking, I want to show everyone I belong at this level? Like, 100%. Was there, yeah. 100%. And I, and I believe I'd done that. Um, it was the first time I became Anton Rio's brother to the outside to outside of our dressing room because I was Rio's brother in there. <laughs> Frio, <laughs> lips. I was, I was never Anton. <laughs> Um, so all of a sudden going out and people going, oh, there's Anton. 
not his Rose brother was like a massive, massive mm. thing for me. You know, and I think I believe that first season in the Premier League enabled that to happen. You know, and and not just that, where I came from in Peckham, I weren't the best player in my age group. You know, and and but I was the one who made it. Mm. So I was also representing my friends who should have been playing in the Premier League because they were better than me, but they wasn't. And I was. Yeah. So it's almost like I can't go I can't go to to New Bar <laughs> or I can't go to TGI Fridays unless the square foot was going out in West End on a Saturday night. The TV's on, match of the days on, and I'm getting I'm getting beat, like I'm getting I'm getting skinned and my mates are there going, right, what happened to you? I couldn't do that. Do you know what I mean? I I had a pride where it was like, if someone's chatting rubbish about me, I'm giving my friends the ability to go, no, you're wrong. Yeah. You was you brilliant know? that first year though. That first year me and Gabs come, you were, not, I am, well, you sat there, but you were brilliant. You and Gabs, I remember watching from the sideline going, I've got no arguments here. And, and when you're saying about, I want to show people that I belong in the Premier League, I think with me, I felt lucky to be there. If if that makes sense, Gabs was Gabs has always been Gabs. We know yeah. like until until you play with Gabs, you don't really, I don't think people really saw or know how good he was. Mm -mm. I felt like I had jumped on the back of Gabs's move a little bit. Really? Yeah. Like you think most of the fee was Gabs and a little. Bit I, I think <laughs> you know this is probably the way I think, but I felt lucky to be almost a bit embarrassed a little bit, is in my own ability to be, and that's just the way I felt for a lot of my career. So I think that's why I probably struggled a little bit that first year with you doing so well. So it's. Yeah, the, the 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 first year at West Ham, even though we were doing so well and it was a great dressing room, I was always in the back of my mind. I was always felt a bit, a little bit lucky, and and Gabs was the man, sort of thing. They've signed Gabs, so I, I think the first year you look, I think I probably only played three, four times. Well, do you know what, though? I think Pard was a smart man. You know, hmm. he's a smart manager, hmm. and he probably knew because one thing I loved about Pards was he didn't just know the football; he knew the person. Yeah, which is why every one of us in that team would run through a brick wall for him, especially in that first year. He probably knew that in you. Yeah. And he probably managed you in the right, mm. in the right way to go, okay, I'm not going to, I'm going to put him in and out. Even though I was struggling, like not struggling, like I said, just mentioned about maybe feeling a bit lucky to be here. Pards is the only manager up to that point. Pards is the first manager to that point where I actually learned in training to be a defender. Yes. Remember the little <laughs> really? drill, honestly, the little drills we used to do. I hadn't seen it before. Because obviously coming from Cardiff and, and no disrespect to any other managers, but it's the first time I'd seen he'd take me, he'd take the the center, he'd take the back four and, the, and then the, the the reserve sort of back four, if you like, and do actual defending sessions. And I yeah. hadn't seen anything like that. So as much as I wasn't playing that first year, I probably learned no. a lot as in how to defend and, 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 and watching the boys. And it doesn't get enough credit for that, I don't no. think. It's do the, first, the first uh, time I'd seen I it. I always say about pods, his attention to detail, especially in that first season, when we played against, whoever we played against, every session, Monday to Friday, was tailored to who we were playing against. Mm. So the keep ball session, would there'd be certain rules in it that we would need for the game on Saturday. Yeah. You know, like when we, went, so for instance, I'll give you an example. If we was playing against Arsenal, Arsenal, never went wide. They always tried to come through come the middle with you. So we would do a keep ball where there was end zones, but... Like a narrow pitch, wouldn't it? A yeah. narrow pitch. But what would happen is for for the team that was... The, the team, the reserve team, for them to score, they'd have to score through the middle. So we had to push them wide at all times. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So like... Everything was now down to what we were going to do on a Saturday. I've got a question then. Did you practice penalties? <laughs> what? Chris, why, why are you he's, bringing he's, this up? He's just, he's just you dropped you it. Know, but I'm genuinely <laughs> intrigued. Did you, in prepare, did you prepare him for the Liverpool game? Was, um, there, was there much practice in I the penalty? We did practice. We did practice. I think we did. We did practice. Was I one of the five? No. See, I, I thought that'd be the case. I wasn't worrying about it. But fight. you would be the first to put your hand mm. up, I'd bet. That's, what, that's exactly what happened. There on wasn't the day. many. There no, wasn't that, many putting we their hand up. We were searching for the fifth. Yeah. We were searching for number five. And, and I remember I was knackered. I was knackered yeah, on the day. Everyone was. Everyone like, was. The adrenaline of the game. The heat. The the heat. Right, it was no, hot. I'm just that. Do you know what? FA Cup is to be an end all for a young 
British player. You know, it's what you know, it's what you've watched over the years. And you know how big it is, but you don't realise how big it is until you play in it. Yeah. For the simple yeah. reason of, in terms of the media, I'd never seen anything oh, like it. Was it was mental, wasn't it? 10 days prior to the game, you're doing ESPN Asia. Then you're going to another ESPN, it's ESPN America. So then you're actually understanding and realising this game's being played worldwide. And then you start to understand and realise how big it is. You know, and... and I actually, I was a fan. I was there that day and I actually cried when Abide With Me, the hymn they always sing at the FA Cup. I was like, West Hammer and FA Cup finally it hit me when they started singing Abide With Me, something I'd seen on yeah. TV my whole life. Mm -hmm. So to be there playing, I can't imagine. Was, I can't remember a thing about the build-up. I can't. I can't. I, 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 like you I, said, I remember the press being mad. I, I, the actual day of the game. Do you not remember having a, a, a beer the night before the game? I remember that. Part, uh, let me just put in context. Yes, yeah, don't say, yeah, <laughs> let's clear let's that Let's put that up. context let's clear that, that, by up. the way, guys. It was just the 10 parts. Pards, pards, no. allow any any big game. We've done it the year before yeah. in the playoff final. The night before the game, we had a meal all together and we were allowed either one, one beer, beer or one glass of wine, whether it be red or white. You was allowed one, one um, unit, I should mm. say, of it. And... That was just to relax the boys, just to get us relaxed mm. and keep us there chatting, really, and a togetherness, really. Uh, and settle the nerves, I suppose. Exactly. But like, I saw, yeah, I remember, now you say I remember that, but I don't remember like the bus journey into the ground. I remember Do it. you? Do I you? remember it. Any given Sunday on the way in. Yeah. <laughs> didn't he, do, I heard it, so he played the clip from Any Given Sunday, Al Pacino field, but didn't yeah. he do that the year before as well? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was like, do you know what was different this year? The FA Cup route, you see all your fans on the yeah. you see so we're driving through where all the West Ham fans are and I could see the flags and do you know what in that period so I was never one that really got nervous when it came to the game my nerves came before the game so like yeah. pre-match meal having to force food down because I felt nervous and I felt sick and I'm forcing chicken pasta because I know I need it and it's all sitting here. <laughs> and then getting on the bus, I'm still nervous. And then when I saw all the West Ham fans, like oh, is it, the emotions start. Mm. And I remember getting a little bit emotional, like it's the, West, it's the FA Cup final. I'm a West Ham fan. I, I can create history. I can be looked upon as the greats of, of, of our football club who have won something for our football club. I've now got an opportunity to be one of them if we win. So I was like, all of that started to play in, on my mind. Got a little bit of emotion, got a little bit emotional. Then we got to the game, got to the stadium, went and put my bag down, my wash bag and everything down. Saw obviously all the, the memorabilia with, mm. with the FA Cup logo on it and the writing on it and everything. Went for a wee, and then the minute I went and stepped on the pitch, all my nerves went. I remember that, okay, all my nerves went. On. Because my game head, exactly, mm. my game head went on. And then, yeah, we get to the penalties, man. <laughs> so tell me what happens. You we get, get in the centre circle penalties. after the extra time. We'd Three obviously all. We'd obviously had our five, but players weren't on the pitch. Who would have been the five? I can't really remember. I know Marlon would have I mean, been one of them. Yeah, Marlon, Bobby, Bobby. Bobby missed, didn't he? Yeah. Um, There's only Taylor scored, wasn't it? Yeah. Who would, I can't... <sighs> It was yeah. Anton, Bobby, Marlon, Ted. Conch. Conch. Yeah, it was only Ted who scored. Marlon, yeah. Marlon didn't take one. Did Marlon he not? was yeah. off the pitch. He was off the pitch, yeah. But like, I remember, I remember, um, four, like, we got four, and Paz going, anybody want the fifth? <laughs> anybody? And, was, and I'm looking to the captain. Where's Nigel? <laughs> <laughs> Surely Nige captain is going to take responsibility here. Nige surely. Was like looking in the stand like that. Oh, <laughs> Nige didn't want no part of it. None. And I remember like, Paz going like, no, we need five. We need at least five. <laughs> and I just went, do you know what? Like, yeah, I'll have it. You know, I, I'm one, I'm a West Ham fan. I should take the responsibility being a youth product as well. And 
good enough to Carl take Fulham. one. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, I'm good enough to take one. So yeah, I'll have number five. You were actually, you were number four. Was I four? <laughs> Zamora, <laughs> okay. Zamora went first, Sheringham, Concheski, Fernand. Who would have been fifth then? I don't know. I thought I was number five. No, I you said four. Number four. Yeah, funny, I was the, I was the still, one that, still, a, still a last one I suppose like, and yeah but we'd only scored one yeah, we'd only scored I remember, one I remember, I remember I remember going up I was confident going up really confident going up to the to take the penalty put the ball down knew what I wanted to do what did you want to do score <laughs> yeah, yeah. score just, just, hit, just, hit, just see the, 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 the net ripple that's what yeah. I wanted to see no, I knew I w where I wanted to go. Um, I'd obviously visualised it and everything. Put the ball down, and it was silent. And I put <laughs> oh, the ball down, no. and I remember hearing, "Remember Nokia, the yeah. the, the, the ringtone kick," <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "Where's that come from?" So like, <laughs> like, and I swear, I just like froze a bit. Then I'm stepping back and I'm going, right, the goal looks small. Because, mm. you know, the penalty goal looks yeah. small. And then I just missed it. I missed it. Did you change it, your mind man. at all? Did you change your mind at the last minute? Or no. Did you kind of end up going, is it down the middle? I'm trying to remember. To the, to the left. To the it, left. Was, it was a poor yeah. penalty. There's no mm. game. And I, I always say it was a great save. Great save. <laughs> and Pepe Reina had a good, um, he great was good record, at penalties. He, yeah. Good record penalties. Pepe Reina. But then... Obviously, there's no rebounds because it was a penalty shoot, <laughs> but the ball comes out and I and I try to rifle it with my left foot. And it, <laughs> it. <laughs> and it goes in the stand. <laughs> and like I just remember like that feeling. That feeling that like I've let everyone down. Nah. I've let the whole club yeah. down. Everyone's travelled, paid big money to be here, and I. <laughs> it. That's what the the feeling I got. And I remember going down on my knees and. I just wanted the ground to swallow me up. I just wanted the ground to swallow me up. And it was like, it was one of the worst days of my life as a footballer. Oh man. Was like missing a penalty. Yeah, you know what it was? You got to think as well, like I said earlier, being a West Ham fan, that was my opportunity to become and be known as one of the greats. Yeah. You know, and and I missed that opportunity. Not just that, from, from my family personally, that's the only trophy that my family don't have because that's the only trophy Rio didn't win Ugh. was the FA Cup really? he won everything by the FA Cup and I could have added to our family collection and I f***ing didn't oh. <laughs> I mean we were so close is it do you ever do you watch that game back do you no own, uh, no chance I've seen the I've seen the seen I've the seen goal. the Gerard goal yeah. seen the goal it's impossible not to I haven't it? I've seen all the goals I haven't watched the I haven't watched the whole game back no, not, not a chance of I life. watched it on the day I don't need to watch it again yeah, I, don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't watch it I don't I don't watch it that's like that yeah. haunted me for a long time did it haunted me for a very very long time through your whole playing career yeah, yeah. like any type of penalties that went straight into my head yeah but like, did you take a penalty after that yeah, the, yeah. No, I know you know. I know. I know you know. What was the other the one? The following year was for England. England, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, in the twenty ones in the in the Euros against Holland. Was that not about thirteen or something? Was it that game? Thirteen twelve. Scored the first one. I'm buzzing. Yeah, like, <laughs> you gotta go again. <laughs> and I had to go again. I hit the I hit, hit the, the bar, did I? Hit the bar. <laughs> Like it was unbelievable, like unheard of. Like who got who? So I remember that. I watched it on the telly. It was like thirty no. Every wow. every one had taken, and then they had to go back. Had to again. go back round, like, and I hit the first one, pull it in the back of the net, and I remember coming back, and I was going, "Job yes. done, job, job done. done, yeah." Like, buried, and, I, and yeah. I was actually saying, "The FA Cup final's out of my head." Yes, <laughs> I'd done it. Yes, because obviously a lot of pressure on me because yeah, I'd yeah. missed the, the the summer before in the FA Cup final. Then I'm thinking, right, it's come back. It's <laughs> was it getting around. like two or three before you're thinking, ah, <laughs> yeah. oh, no. Yeah, I was thinking, oh, no, I'm going I was to thinking, thinking please, please make a save. <laughs> <laughs> please make a save or Holland miss. Please, I don't want another one. Stepped up and I hit the bar. Yeah, remember it. Watch it on the telly. And like... Have you taken one since that? <laughs> no, no. Didn't take one again. <laughs> Did not take one again. Oh, and like, it was just, it was mental. Like, it's unheard of. 13 12 in a, in a bloody penalty shootout. <laughs> oh, man. I think we should lay the ghost to rest on, yeah, on the yeah. penalties yeah. and talk about 
2007. Yeah. It's probably the only time I had a run of games playing next year. Me and you yeah. played the last bit of me, send yeah. off. Yeah. The Great Escape. Great Escape. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was... Um, we was in trouble March, weren't we? We was. That, that season, yeah, from the start to probably when we played Charlton away and we got beat four. Four. And I was at fault for three out of the four goals I was on the day. Me and you were playing. That's funny because I think I was at fault for <laughs> no, three out of the four as well. <laughs> I was, but I remember the week before I was Darren in Bent. Yeah. Bentley played for them. Yeah, and yeah, I remember yeah. the week before that I was in America and I weren't supposed to be in America. Really? Remember? Oh, you remember yeah, that? This is when you said you were going to the Isle of Wight. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. didn't, that was no, Miranda, that by the way. <laughs> she said that. Um, but yeah, from the start to probably to then, mm. We were a shambles, like. Yeah. But it started in pre-season, the beer festival. Pa's taking us to Sweden on, on uh, the pre-season. And, Sweden and, trip. And we was like right next to a beer festival. And <laughs> anyone who was in our squad knew it was the worst place we could be because <laughs> we had a cult of drinkers. We had, a, we had a group that just loved the beer. And any opportunity we had to go out, we did. You say that, but we never, never took the mick as no, in, no, do you know no, what I mean no. it was I'm not always saying taking the yeah. mic in, in reason yeah, yeah. but if there was an opportunity to go out in reason we were gone mm. do you know yeah. what I mean if we didn't have a game within two days of that and there was something going on and it got mentioned in dressing room always five six of us yeah I'm coming <laughs> we, and, and I think that's why it, it swings and roundabouts I think but it, because that's why our group was so good because we done stuff off the pitch and on the pitch together mm. do you know what I mean and like the camaraderie within that squad, I've never seen anything yeah, like it. I think James puts it perfectly. You're going to work every day with your mates, with your best mm. mates. And that's the feel that we had. But bigger than that, and I think the reason why the fans appreciated our team, every one of us in that squad understood what it took to play for West Ham. Yeah. You know, and that was driven from within. Yeah. I'm sure for when sure. you first come to the to the to the club, players like myself nobs and players that had been in the club for a while made you understand yeah, listen yeah. this is what you need to do to play for this football club you need to have this type of mentality to play for this football club you know and and it's no coincidence that a lot of players from that team became West Ham fans yeah yeah let's have it right yourself yeah you know became West Ham fan Jimmy Walker Marlon Harewood you know they became fans of the football club one because of that dressing room, but two because they understood no, about to play for West what it took to play for the football club, you know. And and that season, the oh seven season, I think because we weren't we weren't as fit as we was the previous season, we almost forgot that because we couldn't do the hard yards that we'd done the the, the, the season before. Yeah. One because I think we weren't we weren't fit enough, and. Was there an element of like, well, I've proved myself. I don't need to work as hard. Potentially, but like for me personally, I, my pride wasn't, it wasn't one of those where I'd go, I've proved myself. I don't need to work as hard anymore. I don't think it was any, I think there was too many voices. Mm. I think, um, and I say this about Pards a lot. I think Pards for me was my favorite manager that I've had in my whole career. But if you look at him as a manager, everywhere he's gone, when he's done well, the season after, it's almost like he relaxes, mm. you know? And, and I think us as a team, we've done that. Definitely. We relaxed. We had achieved so much the season before. Um, and it wasn't until, I think, do you remember the Charlton game when our yeah. flipping went off of it after the game for about 10 minutes? I I've, I remember me going off as well. And Pard's like... No, it was no, curbs. Okay. curbs. It was herbs. And shouting or saying something, but in the back of my head, I'm sat there thinking, <laughs> why am I shouting? <laughs> yeah, I had the same. <laughs> why am I I've shouting? No I, right. Like, because it's mad. Because I, I remember the goals going in thinking, oh, that's me again. That's me again. <laughs> but then some for some reason after the game, I'm shouting at people. <laughs> so all the boys were thinking, what is this guy on? Oh, yeah. He's just cost us the game, four zip, talking about me. Yeah. Thinking. And I've like, like, got no I, right to be shouting. I was thinking the exact same thing. I, I think it was embarrassment. I, was, I thought I was in... I generally think I it was thought embarrassment. I was I I've got to say, I've got to shout something, yeah? I thought I was at fault. But I remember 
Curbs, from the day he come in, when we didn't win a game, the only thing I heard was we got to do better next week. <laughs> and that used to jar me. I used to come out of there like seething, like got to do better next week. Because it was a mad one though, because Pars, Pars had, had gone, gone to, to Charlton, Charlton and Curbs had come to us. Come to and West yeah. But then that after that, that must have been after Christmas, March time. I remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember sat in the, sat in the house looking at the league, and I think it was early March, maybe we were on twenty points, ten to go, maybe twelve to go, and I'm thinking this we're is this is bother. And then yeah. so, I don't know what it was. I, I've never really spoken to you about it. Lucas Neal was skipper. That meeting, I thought he was. He that, was that meeting. Yeah, do you remember I thought, that meeting yeah, after yeah, the Charlton yeah, game where yeah. Curbs and Mervin and Snodge tried to get, come in to the meeting? He went, yeah. oh, players only. Yeah, and he yeah, shut the door. I do and remember that. And I remember like him just saying, we're all good players in here. Yeah. We all know what we need to do. We're all good technically. We're is all that Upton Park? Game. No, that was at Chadwell. At Chadwell. We all know what we, we need to do, which is to work hard. The only thing we're not doing, we're not, we're not grafting enough. Mm. We, like, and no disrespect to Curbs, he was like, like, he ain't giving us what we need to go out and win games. We know how to play. We know what we need to do. We know the first 10 minutes we turn teams because we've got pace and power up, up top. Then we can play after that. But one thing we need to do is flip and work hard. If we're not going to work hard, there's the door. F*** off. <laughs> Remember? And he, and he went, is everyone with me or are they not? Whoever's, whoever wants to work, whoever don't want to work hard, there's the door. So who's with me? And everyone put their hand up and said, are we with you? And then that was the that was it. That was the start. That was was Tevez in that meeting? Yeah, he was. <laughs> the interpreter, well, I remember the interpreter. What was his name? Kieran, the interpreter. He was uh, in I, there. I don't know. I, I'm still convinced Carlos spoke English. <laughs> I am. Everyone asked me, I'm convinced. He just did, I just think of this, he didn't want to speak to us. <laughs> yeah. Do you know the best thing about Carlos? Yeah. I had kn I knew whether he'd been in the casino all night. <laughs> I knew. But I didn't know through him. I knew through his interpreter. Because yeah. the interpreter would come with matchsticks in his eyes like that, <laughs> where he'd not been asleep all night. So I knew Tevers had been out in the casino all night just based on Kieran, the interpreter. <laughs> but like, even like... when Can it, you remember when the game that up, changed it? Remember Blackburn away? Yeah. If you look back at the game, it's mental. Yeah. Have you seen, do you remember the game? When Black he blocked off the line. Oh, Carlos <laughs> has blocked one on the line, offside, not even yeah. gone over the line. Yeah. Bobby's hit a shot. They've given the goal. Yeah. Absolute. The, onslaught. The, the, the most dubious penalty you've ever seen in your life. We onslaught, scored, yeah. Carlos must score. I yeah. suppose yeah, Carlos was taking them. Win 2-1 away at Blackburn on a Tuesday night. And then after that, we were just... just it was just, we through. couldn't keep a clean sheet. Couldn't keep no. one for no. love nor money. Couldn't keep one. No. Randomly, oh, so away you did. Yeah, at the Emirates. Yeah, but how then, we did that day. Yeah, that was eight shots on goal. Wait, how we did that day. I, I don't, don't think know. we had a lot to. Greeny was over. <laughs> Greeny, was Greeny had the game of his life. Thirty-eight shots. I think they had thirty-eight shots on goal or attempts, and we won one nil. <laughs> it's incredible. Bobby, 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 what, a Bobby, goal. what a goal! And then like a clean like, sheet at Old Trafford last game of the season. Yeah, can you remember the, the late sub? For that game, <laughs> yeah. I remember looking over to him going, ah, like hanging on anyway. Uh, like Yossi had cleared, Yossi had never cleared one off the line. Yossi's nodded one off the line. It was starting to hang on. It's getting late in the game. Substitute, Man United, triple sub on it. Yeah. Look over. They brought Skulls, Giggs and Ronaldo on <laughs> on the 73rd yeah, I minute. I looked at him going, <laughs> get your crash armor on because this is going to be this is going to be a tough cool. tough 15 minutes that funny thing about that substitution United make a triple substitution we make a substitution at the same time we bring on Marlon Harewood yeah so yeah. they would have been quaking in their boots do you know what, do, do you know what? I love the sarcasm love it <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what was um, mad about that game the Old Trafford game Old Trafford game you know like in your career I don't know if you had it you know like in, in your career Certain games in the in the build up to games, you just know you're going to win them. I had the same. I had that feeling. I think I spoke. I think I spoke to Nobs on the bus on the way to Old Trafford that day and said, "I I, I fancy us here." Yeah. Because uh, they were champions. They were already. Like, they were getting the trophy after that game. I did have a conversation with Rio in the week leading to that <laughs> game. I did. I, I did. I remember saying to Rio, "Like, you've won the league. Like, you got. You've won the the Champions League final. Yeah, yeah, yeah." yeah. And I remember going like, you've won the league. Any danger <laughs> of like a, yeah. a, a weekend They team? didn't know. Any danger? Like, 
But I remember after the game trying to get, <laughs> we had just stayed up by the skin of our teeth. And I was trying to get a bottle of champagne out of the Man United dressing room that said <laughs> champions on it. <laughs> Did you do it? I think I might have done. Yeah. I think I might have done. That was unbelievable. The, the scenes after uh, were unbelievable. To go to Old Trafford and, and win. To that stay run, up. that whole run. The whole the run. Elate, I can't imagine the elation you must have felt after that, do after doing it. Do you know Impossible what? Six job. clean sheets. That's five or six clean sheets out of nine, I think, yeah. when it really got to it. Do, do, do Carlos you know gets all the uh, plaudits, scored all the goals. Yeah, well, but I, clean, I, I, I tell clean him sheets. what it was mine and Anton's uh, doing. <laughs> do you know what's sheet. mad as well? The same. Curbs gets plaudits, but we didn't listen. If we're being honest, did we listen to a word he said in that running? I just remember going into every game thinking this is... <laughs> Do or die. Exactly. Is, and let's you could, off, you, you felt like you couldn't lose one. We lost one that run as well. I think we lost Man 3 United, 0. Was it at home? No, we lost 3 0. Chelsea? Did we lose to Sheffield United 3 0 yeah, in that running. Oh, yeah, that's right. And yeah. I was thinking, Sheffield we had away. done really well before it, and it was just a yeah, random Sheffield one chucked away. in, lost 3 0. And I'm thinking, yeah. back to square one, we ain't going to do it. But then the next week, I think we might be Everton at home, maybe, or something like that. Do you know when I knew? You know when, like, when we beat Bolton at home, the last home game? No score. Did no score? Yeah, the last yeah. home game. Volley, yeah. When we won that, mm. and we was going, we, like, we had to go to Old, Old Trafford. Trafford, and I was thinking like, because if we lost that game, we were done. Yeah, and we won that game. That I was, was like, massive. I fancy us next week, and you know why? The biggest thing is looking to my right, looking to my left, and looking in front of me and going, you know what? I'm playing with. They're all who, doing it. Yeah. Who, who, if we are in the trenches, which we are. These are I the boys you'd want. Him. And yeah. these are the boys I want yeah. to be in the trenches with. You know, and, and that gave me a, a quiet confidence going mm. into the United game. I'm playing with Ginny and I'm going, there's someone I want to go to a war with, it's him. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, it, so, and it's yeah. a big thing. Yeah. And that was built in a dra in a training yeah. ground, day in, day out. Oh, answer so many good memories. Thank you so much. And your passion just shines through. I hope you'll be back again. I'm sure you Cheers, will be. Nice one. Cheers, Anton. Thank Cheers. you for listening. We'll see you next week. Until then, come on, you irons.